welcome back to the journey coach and I am now putting out a course design portal template and I'm going to publish it here on the journey coach I know I have a lot of um, doctoral students who are working professionals and some of you have joined the channel just because you like the notion videos and like to learn more and so this would be relevant to you but for those working professionals who are in a doctorate program don't be afraid to actually put your knowledge out there um, into the universe as a course and you know, for those of you who love Notion, building it out into um, Notion is a great thing to do. So I actually have set up uh, the template that I use and I've also added some videos. So this is the template that you would be purchasing. And I'm going to give you a link um, down below where you can go to get it and a few options depending on what you want to do. But when you're looking at this, this is what you'll be getting. So I have a sample course and some sample modules and lessons in here and resources. But what I want you to pay close attention to is you have a link right here for a page. So start there. So if you click that page, what you will see is embedded videos. So I've done a video on the overall design portal, the concept to launch area, the building a module, and creating lessons. And so I go over the templates and just some advice on how you might change those templates and look at different things. So that comes with uh, the purchase of the template itself. So what you would actually do is go in and duplicate it. So now that I've shown you that, I'm going to go over to my course building um, structure. And I actually have two of these. So wait a minute. I have a um, company I work with that I build out things for. And so we actually have a headquarters portal and then we have a design portal that we use as well. And so I use the exact same thing I built out for mine and here's how that is set up. And we have multiple people that are responsible for different modules and areas. And so that's built into this. I'm gonna take you into more detail over into my HQ and my individual course hub. So if I go here and go to my course design hub, this is my personal one, then you see the courses laid out here. You see I have one that is 96% complete. And we'll go look at that in a minute because it actually is fully complete. I probably unchecked an area just for this example. And then I have one that I'm working on. And so you'll notice that I have dates of when the build starts and when it ends. And um, so we're going to look into this one. So this is a fully built course. And if we go down here, oh, I was doing a sample lesson. So that doesn't actually exist. As I change lessons, so there's 27 lessons total in this course. And as I add them down here, it automatically rolls up and adjusts this number. As I mark them off completed and check this box, it goes up here and increases the completed number, which changes my progress bar. So let me just go down here and I'm going to unclick a couple of these. So you'll notice a few things. That automatically changed module one because both of those lessons were mo in module one. Module one only counts the lessons that are assigned to it. And it gives me a progress bar. So 60% now complete to module one. But if I look up at the overall course, I'm 93% complete because I have two lessons not completed. So you'll see the math and the progress bar is different because I have them rolled up at different in different ways. But um, those are already set for you. So I'm going to go ahead and click those off. Now, this comes when you roll a course, start a course, this template populates. So you get this section right here, which is the concept to launch for service or products. And then you get the modules in the gallery view, your lessons and your resources. And these are automatically self-referencing to this course. So when you spin a course up, you will only see in those um, those areas, the databases, what is specific to the course you just put together. So whatever you type in as the name here will automatically update the filters down here. The concept to launch, this is not new in terms of marketing, but it can be very helpful if you're really trying to decide on a course direction. So these are toggles that give you some directions, some questions to answer just to get clear about your concept, 
to do the appropriate research at a baseline level, to analyze what you're thinking of doing, and to develop a good plan for your course, and then to create a launch plan. So this populates out for every single one. And then you just need to fill in your information. And again, when you go over into the template, one of the videos really focuses on each of those areas to give you information. Then you get a module overview. So you get a template for the module that will roll up the information so you can see this list of items that are going on. Um, and I tailor it for each module. But when you roll, when you spin one up off a template, you get the entire list and then you can change it as you get clear about what you're doing. In the lessons, you also have um, a lesson template. So you can open up a lesson, start the template, but I am going to delete this and then we're just going to open one that's already done so you can see what that looks like. So if I go into, let's go into this one. So what you will see is now, if I'm in the planning stage, then I've got this single select planning, writing, media creation, editing, published. I can choose whichever state it's in. If it's in anything but editing and published, then this includes list is what I'm planning to do. Once that hits published, this is what's been done. <laughs> and so that's what I take and put into that module snapshot. But this is a multi-select list. Um, of the different things that you could find in a lesson in, in courses with me. And so that gives you that overview. Any kind of extra note, um, like this particular lesson had two take action lists. That's the note I had on that one. My update log, I go over to these in more detail if you're, if, you, if you're watching a template video. Connect it to your module. These are the resources that are rolling up. Um, it's completed. Before I hit complete, I use this estimated progress that it's just a type in number. And that way I can look at the lesson table and kind of see where I'm at. If they aren't completed, how close to being done are they in my estimation? Then this is also embedded in every lesson. You've got a checklist that you can go through and make sure that you check off um, the item. So this does not have a podcast uh, video or a worksheet. That's why those aren't. But I did write the article. It is, all of this is actually done. So I'm going to check it off while we're in here. But this to me, I don't necessarily always check these off anymore because I've been doing it so long. It's, I, but it's a, it's a reminder. Yeah, I need to do that. And if, if something doesn't exist, what I tell you to do is to delete them. And so that's all I needed for a preparation checklist here. And you can add more to that. Just add it on the template. I put the picture I'm going to use and then give attribution so I know where it came from. And I can always hit original here. And that'll take me back to where I found it so that I can access that directly. Then I write, you know, what's going into the lex lesson. Um, I have reflection lists. I have take action lists, um, GIFs that I'm going to put over another take action list and then any resources and the resources I have a show to student check box. So these are resources that I actually in the content am giving students as a link to go out and read. There are some things that end up on this list that that checkbox isn't marked because it's not going to a student. I'm, it's just for my reference as part of my writing process. And so this is a really easy way. Um, I sort by show to student. So the things that are shown to student populate at the top. And then anything that's just my reference is at the bottom of this resource list. And that way I know easily when I'm transferring this over into my um, platform, which I use Podia and I really recommend. I'll put a link down in the bottom if you're interested in exploring them then I know that those are going with this entire lesson. And so as you look at this, you know, I've got this set up so that I can really manage my overall course design. I know where things are. I don't really in this hub, I don't, this is everything. You could set up different views so that you had a view per class 
So I've got that in here. I can do that and it'll just um, filter for starting for that class or I could put writing and it'll just, you know, what's in writing. And if I look at this, I want to sort on this. So I would add a sort as well, name ascending. So it puts them in the modules in order. But I don't operate from here because same thing with the lessons. I could do the same thing down here. These are just my databases. I work out of a course. So really that top part is all I look at. I open a course I'm going to work on and this is where I do everything I need to do. I can see where my progress is. Um, I can see what I need to work on because, you know, what's close to being done or not. And this just gives me, I'm going to put estimated, I've been meaning to move that and I hadn't, but estimated progress. So when I com complete it, I usually just erase any number and estimated progress. If it's not completed, then there's a number in there. But what that would let me do is if, let's say this one's 50, this one's 25, this one, I'm not going to have a hundred. I mean, I'm just going to leave it empty because it's done. That means when I'm in my course, I could look down here and see, you know, where I'm at in estimated progress. And if I don't see a number in there, then that means for me that it's checked off complete. I don't need to worry about it at all. And again, I have these sorted, so they're by ascending by their actual title. And I use a numeric system, which coordinates with the modules. And that way, if I add it, I went, oh, I want a 1.6 lesson. All I have to do is go down here and add it at the bottom. It'll automatically sort itself and put it up under the 1.5. And then I just need to make sure that I assign it to the right module. Right. And so once it's assigned to the right module, it will actually roll up into all of these calculations correctly. So that's how I have this set up. And this is kind of an overview of how I use the portal and how it works and even how I've spun it up and worked. I mean, it works in another um, company I have and with another group. And we actually have over here, I have it set up where we have different templates. So different ones of us who are responsible for courses can spin up a course and there's slightly different information already populated depending on who's, whose course it is. And then when you go down to the modules and get in here, we have assignments. So we assign by module. So I may not be kind of the owner of the class, but I may be assigned module within that. And then I can see how I'm getting closer to being completed in that module. So, you know, you can do it with multiple people as well. But this is the one that you are going to get and you will be able to duplicate, duplicate all of it. Um, watch the videos. If you have questions, I have um, my email address up here. If you have questions, before you purchase and you just want to design it yourself, um, feel free to watch this video over and over to get kind of an idea of how things are structured and then build it out. I mean, it's definitely doable that anybody could build it. Um, you just need to decide how you want it done. If you want to skip all that work and get a bit of a tutorial with it, then feel free to purchase this one. And then you can go down and you'll get these extra videos um, about it. And you can also, one of the things I've asked is that as you use it, if you find new ways to do things or things that you feel like are really um, important um, or just are interesting, feel free to shoot me an email. I'd love to hear how you're using it. And if you discover new ways to organize the portal, um, because I very well may want to do that as uh, as much as you do um, in changing it. And one other thing, go back over to mine, because in the tutorial on here, I made a comment about, you know, resizing. Oh, that's my to do. You don't need to see that. Um, resizing, you know, artwork that you have in lessons and that type of thing and made it sound like you'd have to put columns in place. And I just want to, I'll fix that now. So you can see, like, for instance, this artwork, it really is a little too big for this page. And I just didn't resize when I was doing this. I just dragged them in and let them populate at whatever size they wanted to. But that's how easy it is. You can go up, get that little toolbar, and then you can make bigger or smaller in your page. Um, so just an FYI, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, fix that statement from the videos I've embedded in the tutorials with it. 
and just let you know you can resize any of that pretty easily. Okay, well, let me know um, if you have any questions. I really hope you find this useful and I hope that you use it as a if you've been struck with, you've liked the idea of creating a course based on your individual knowledge, but you've been unsure how to go about organizing it and getting started. I hope this gives you the impetus to know that you can do it. Um, this will help you be structured and organized in your creation and even think through the concept to the launch. And then you're that much closer to really being able to go forward and um, get yourself and your content out there. And it creates a whole new avenue for earning some money as, as you get opportunities to do so. So it's been great talking to you this week. I hope you find this useful. I'll put the link in the bottom um, to purchase if it's something that you're interested in. And if you have any questions, shoot me an email and let me know. Or just respond to this YouTube and I will be happy to answer the question. Until next time, bye.